my name is Tommy Kraft, and I'm here to bring you the third Star Trek Horizon video blog. Now, I know it's been a long time since the last blog, but I've been very, very busy on the project, getting things together so we can finally begin shooting. It's a long time past when I originally planned to start shooting, but it's been a wait that's been worth it because it's going to make the project even better. As I've said before, Star Trek Horizon is a feature film. And I really, due to my passion with Star Trek and filmmaking and science and science fiction, I want this project to be great. So I've been taking the time to make it great. And I'm really hoping that you will love what I have to show you in this video blog. Now first on the list is everybody's favorite, props. I've been working very diligently to assemble a list of props that are authentic to Star Trek Enterprise and will really help convey that experience like you're actually watching an episode of Star Trek Enterprise and moreover a standalone Star Trek film. The first on the list is the phase pistol. Now while it is just the Art Asylum phase pistol toy, um, well it was, now it's the real phase pistol. We won't tell the captain about that. It's an article secret. Next, I have hand scanners. Two of these, one that is a hero prop that opens and closes, and one that is static, always open. These were put together by the wonderful Scott Irwin. He just did beautiful work on putting these together for me, and they're very, very accurate to the show. And this is the hero prop right here. Opens like the real thing looks like the real thing and I think will really help lend that air of authenticity to the film. Next on the list, communicators. Where would you be without your communicator getting in touch with the captain or whoever? Hmm? And final on the list for this blog is the pad that I've been putting together myself. This is a cabin lights panel. They aren't made anymore, but you can still get them on eBay um, or other places on the web. And it's actually what they use for the show. It's just been repainted to look like the Enterprise pads. And there'll be a transparency that goes uh, on the screen to make it look like it's got an actual computer screen in it. And it works very well. I've got uh, bump-ons down here for the buttons, and it even lights up. Now, what has probably been the biggest learning experience for me by far on this project has been teaching myself how to sew. I looked around on the web for replicas of the Enterprise era uniforms and I just couldn't find something that I thought was authentic enough or really conveyed the high quality feel that I was going for. So what's the next best thing to do? Teach myself how to sew, with my mother's self of course, and do it myself, right? And so what I have here are two uh, uniforms for science officers. And I spent a lot of time on these but the good news is, now that I've done a few of these, it's really starting to move along. And I'm able to crank these out like nobody's business. And I'm hoping, you guys can tell me what you think, that they look authentic and convey the Enterprise feel. Next up is something that's not related to props or costuming, but something that's arguably the most important part of the film, and that is casting. I've completed the cast, it's all done. We've had some readings so far and it's gone very well and I just cannot wait to start shooting with these people and start making a great Star Trek film. And now for the final part of this video blog, effects and music. As you saw in the beginning, I've finished the model of the NX. I have recruited other artists to work on this project too who are helping me. One artist I've recruited is John Pfefferly uh, who's been doing some Romulan models for me and what you're seeing now is an original design that he's created. I think it's a really cool design, it gives kind of an older um, submarine battle style to the ship, but it'll eventually blend right into the Romulan fleet that we're creating because we haven't really seen a Romulan fleet from this era in Star Trek, so we're creating this ship and some others to go along with it that will hopefully complement the Romulan name. But finally, what I have is the sets, the virtual sets. Um, I've spent a ton of time working on these. In fact, the model of the ship itself and the bridge were the first two things that I started working on way back in January. And they're the things that I'm just now getting to production ready. This CG bridge that you see around me and all the compositing that I'm doing to make this work is not even really the final version of what will appear in the film. It's only what I've gotten finished so 
so far in terms of textures and modeling, there's still more tiny details that have to be added to make this work. But even as it is, it's pretty darn representative of how I want the quality of the film to look. And as this all disappears, you can see that around me, it's just my basement with a green screen and a platform. This platform was incredibly fun to build. That was a nice project in itself that my brother put together for me that actually matches the dimensions of the chair platform on the bridge itself. I modeled to real world scale and then I could take those measurements and put them into real live objects for actors to interact with in the film. Doing this will allow the actor to actually step up and down from the chair flat platform and have it match everything with the CG set. One final thing that I would like to talk about with this video blog is the Star Trek Horizon Overture. It's essentially the theme song for the film that I wrote probably a couple of months ago and have released on my website. There's a link in the description to download it as well. If you'd like to work on this project, get in touch. I really like to work with different people, different parts of the world, all over the internet, whatever, to get a project done. And especially for this one, because I think it is truly indicative of what Gene Roddenberry wanted to do with Star Trek. Now, that's all I have for you for this video blog. Next time, we'll be showing the complete build process of the captain's chair, which has been a really fun project. But until then, I'll see you later.